thank you very much um, you know thank you very much for the introduction and i thank uh, ranjit and their team um, for providing me opportunity to interact um, i think we are running behind schedule so i will directly come to my presentation and i'm sharing my screen i hope you can see it yes sir it's uh, visible yeah. so today you know i would be talking about a very important uh, topic which i think uh, you know should be taken up very seriously where i'm going to talk about predicting next Ten challenges which are awaiting digital forensic community. Digital forensics, as we have seen in uh, you know, as previous speaker also told, that digital is the world. You know, everything we are doing today is dependent, uh, is using digital technologies, internet, smartphones, and you know, so many sensors uh, which are there in all the gadgets. So all these things are generating you know uh, terabytes of data, and when we talk about anything going wrong any cyber security incident when we, it requires uh, investigation uh, digital forensic investigation what's happening today is becoming more and more challenging the reason it is becoming more and more challenging is that criminals who are using and misusing the technology for malicious and unlawful activities they know how forensic investigators work today so what they do is they are now trying to develop solutions which are anti forensic solutions they are trying to figure out what cannot be investigated easily and accordingly they are putting forward those challenges in front of digital forensic community so what we are able to do 10 years back we are not able to do those kind of things going forward for example mobile forensics which was very very easy once upon a time and we could get almost all the data uh, when we had conventional feature phones whereas today in smartphones especially the newer ones uh, like iphone 13 and so on and the latest version of android we are not able to extract a lot of data so these are the challenges which are awaiting us. So I'll list down, you know, 10, 11 challenges, which I think should be taken up on priority and we should work upon them. So, you know, uh, this is one of the challenges expected ahead in the next decade. Uh, uh, we all know that privacy is becoming important. We have GDPR, uh, our own data protection act will come someday. Uh, we have techno legal matters which are now becoming important because we are seeing a lot of cases going to the court of law. Once upon a time, there were not many cases of computer science or computer forensics which were going to the court. So our judiciary, our uh, prosecutors and the various stakeholders in law enforcement were not very aware. So there are now for the first time that, you know, IT Act and various other acts of the country are being tested. And then we are finding that, that it requires some kind of enhancements because of development of new technology. For example, when IT Act was made in 2008 and subsequently amended in 2008, uh, we did not have apps. You know, apps came primarily uh, when the iPhone came. And, uh, you know, by the time, uh, we don't have any mention of apps into our apps, right? So, so there are new things which have come up with their new technological solutions, new technological advancements which are coming like Metaverse. Right. If let's say if somebody's avatar is killed in metaverse, is it amounting to a murder or not? And how to deal with these kind of issues? So there are technical legal issues also which are coming up. Uh, so I will talk about that also. One important technical legal issue which comes to my mind is that what happens to the digital data which I own? You know, I have tons of data on Google Drives and you know Gmail and various other uh, banking websites, fintech websites, social media websites. So all that data which belongs to me, all those photographs, documents which belong to me, are right now, there is no legal protection in terms of inheritance. Let's say if I'm no more tomorrow, what happens to my data? Will my family members get back that data? What are the policies and laws around it? They are vague. They are gray. Every social media or a service provider has its own terms and conditions and policies. In some cases, you can't get any data. In some cases, you can get some data and so on. So if there is a business uh, critical data, if there is a copyrighted IPR or a patent or a book, which is there on Google Drive or any other social media, what happens to that? And how do I inherit? How do my family inherit that? So digital inheritance requires not only legal, but a technological solution also. So there are, there are interesting things which are there, which needs attention. We have cloud blockchain and IoTs, which are again opening new doors. Uh, we have 5G technology along with IoT. Uh, which is going to now revolutionize how we live today. But it will also be the case that criminals will take advantage of the same. They will also do a lot of frauds because IoT devices have limited processing capabilities, limiting storage capabilities, and limited, limited security in turn. So if you do not have you know, state-of-the-art solutions, and if you do not think ahead of time, what will happen is we will have adoption of IoT and 5G, 
and where a lot of frauds will happen, a lot of things will go wrong, and then we have to develop solutions. We have electronic vehicles, right? EVs, um, you know, uh, it is predicted that uh, in next five to 10 years, you know, more than half the vehicles which are sold in the country will be electronic vehicles. Now, EVs will have their own challenge, you know, since um, it has a lot of, they have a lot of sensors, they have, uh, you know, a lot of uh, communication between uh, various components, and we have intelligent and smart, uh, you know, transport system. So interaction within car with, with the fellow cars and with the transport system will again pose new challenges which requires our attention and we need to probably think about it. Right. So one, the first important thing which I think is going to happen is people are going to demand privacy preserving forensic investigation, which means that if a case is filed against me for a money laundering, why should an investigator have access to my private data like photos and videos? Right. So, so Today, when we talk about investigation, investigator has access to all the data which is there with me on my devices. If they seize my device, it is almost gone forever because it takes years for them to complete investigation. And by the time investigation is over, you know, it is five years, 10 years, 20 years, and the technology has changed. If I have a 4G phone, and if you seize it today and you give it back after five years or 10 years, you know, technology has moved on. The device has actually lost its value. Data which is not relevant to the cases can has a potential to leak. Let's say an investigator who gets all the data, and if he wants, in some cases, it is possible that data can be leaked. This also delays investigation because there is a lot of unnecessary data which investigator is accessing. It means overall investigation is taking extremely long time and it is not focused. So that's where the pendency of cases are also rising. So what we need is some, some sort of privacy preserving automated forensic investigation framework where you know based on the experience based on the knowledge which we have of investigating past cases can we do something uh, in a privacy preserving automated manner which can actually you know give us evidences quick and fast ensuring completeness of the investigation and that's where you know technologies like approximate hashing intelligent imaging use of 80 20 principle and development of an expert system which can find out on similar type of cases what were the evidences using the data and the metadata properties, if this expert system can rank all the files on a drive in the order of importance of being evidence, it can actually speed up the investigation. It can make sure that you know anything which is not relevant to the case is encrypted and access to that data is given only if, and it is logged to the investigator when this is something important. So or this, this automation will lead to efficiency and effectiveness. That is something which I think is a problem statement to be worked upon. Many people are working on it along with me and my students. So I call upon fellow students and fellow researchers to take a note that this is an important problem. And once we have Data Protection Act in the country, this probably will, will again be, you know, seeing a lot of traction. Then we are seeing that, you know, uh, exponential uh, development in terms of, uh, you know, uh, imaging capabilities like, you know, CCTVs, phones, we are seeing, you know, 60 uh, megapixel, 100 megapixel cameras becoming very, very common. So I predict that, you know, next few years, we will have optical zoom, which is thousand times, you know, something which is a kilometer away, you can actually do an optical zoom. So that kind of technologies will give rise to new security problems, right? And then, then if those kind of images, high quality images are used for doing crime, you will require similar magnitude solution to counter it. For example, if I take 100 megapixel or, you know, uh, 500 megapixel image, you know, processing it will take time, which means I humanly or with using the current set of solutions for uh, image and video forensics, you know, the time required will be too high. So we need to now develop next generation uh, solution, which probably will leverage machine learning and artificial intelligence to probably investigate synthetic videos, high resolution videos, and can we do authentication or and tampering detection in such cases with extremely high uh, efficiency because efficiency is the key if we are able because people are taking hundreds and thousands of photographs the data size is big if we cannot have an optimized solution and we only have solution it will result into delays so we not only need uh, you know good solutions we also need effective and uh, you know optimized solution which are cost effective which are efficient in terms of processing so again you know artificial intelligence and machine learning needs to be leveraged for developing next generation audio video uh, and uh, imagery based uh, forensic investigative solutions. Mobile forensics, as I was discussing in the beginning, you know, uh, chip off is uh, today next to impossible because all these companies who are making these devices, they are ensuring that rival company cannot 
extract any data from their phone to understand how and what they are going to do. Similarly, so, so what happens is chip off is almost not possible. Encryptions are too, too uh, difficult to break. So we need some kind of data extraction uh, uh, you know, solutions which can bypass OS, which can bypass encryption or find some side channel attacks which can give access to the data to the investigators. Otherwise, most of the cases have mobile as a primary artifact uh, and primary evidence. And in 90 to 95% uh, cases going forward, we will not be able to extract data using conventional methods. So next generation mobile forensic is important. And there are new, uh, you know, uh, new attack vectors. For example, there is something known as power delivery protocol. Since USB 3 has become common, type C USB charger has become common. There is a negotiation between power delivery protocol of charger and the phone. And these protocols have vulnerabilities. Using those vulnerabilities, probably you can extract a lot of data bypassing OS, bypassing encryption and usernames and passwords. So, so we need to look for new ways of extracting data. Um, moving on cyber physical systems, they are again, you know, uh, important part of our, uh, all the legacy systems, all the critical systems are typically using, you know, many banks use uh, legacy systems, power grids use legacy systems. So we need to understand that we, we need to, we need to have trained manpower for you know, securing our cyber physical systems. Uh, there, you know, uh, since a lot of forensics was not required, a lot of forensics has not been developed. So we need to develop standards. We need to develop forensic investigative techniques for our cyber physical system, which is again, something important. <clears throat> so we need to share experiences and best practices in handling forensic investigation of cyber physical system, which I have not seen, you know, a lot is happening on that part. Uh, we need to develop vendor neutral protocols and standards for development of next generation cyber physical system. Right now, they are vendor dependent. So again, the idea is can we develop vendor independent vendor neutral protocols and standards? And that is again need of the art. Uh, then, then, you know, cloud is something where all the data is going. So what is happening today is if you go and investigate a criminal, he will have a dumb machine which does not have storage. He's connected to a cloud. Cloud could be a private cloud or, or, or a public cloud. Now what happens is you're not able to get any evidence from the machine of the criminal. Everything is in cloud. So we need to now have some kind of standardization among cloud service providers, some kind of SLA service level agreements among cloud service providers to provide forensic capabilities, to provide uh, access to the data whenever law enforcement agencies require in those scenarios where incident has taken place, right? So there will be the questions about multiple ownership, tenancies, you know, uh, jurisdictions, all these th issues needs to be discussed, understood, and we have to lay out very clear guidelines, right? Because distributed nature of cloud computing uh, gives a very difficult, uh, uh, you know, um, challenge to law enforcement agencies, and it has become a challenge. And, you know, we require the uh, uh, best practices for cloud forensics, we require next generation cloud forensic frameworks, and again, development of uh, neutral, uh, vendor neutral things. Quantum computing also, I think, is knocking on the doors. Um, it is believed that some of the big uh, tech service provider like Google already have quantum computing capabilities. So what we need probably is quantum ready digital forensic tools. So today, what tools we have, they are only going to address the current technologies. So we need to start with, like people are working on quantum ready protocols quantum ready encryption. So we similarly, we need to take up solutions where we talk about quantum ready digital forensic tools. Otherwise, what will happen is one fine day there will be switch over and we will not be able to handle those things. Uh, we require, uh, you know, new solutions for SSD deleted data recovery. You know, magnetic media, if you delete data, there is a lot of chance that you can recover data. But on SSD, you know, solid state drives or, you know, all the modern day storage medias, once data is deleted, it loses complete recovery possibility in few seconds. So I think I know a few researchers who are working on recovering, developing solutions for recovering of deleted data from SSDs. And that is something which is required. We probably also need to make linkages with, you know, next generation data storage providers. So let's say if I'm developing a next generation data storage capability, some kind of new device which can store more data and which is more efficient in terms of power and cost and size, I should make it forensic ready. So what we should do is we should talk to the service providers. We should talk to the developers and the researchers. Whenever they are developing, they should keep one dimension, which is forensic readiness 
of operating system of data storage capabilities and that is something again going to help law enforcement agencies and forensic community in a big way going forward right so iot i have discussed we have uavs uh, we have drones we have uh, you know smart grid smart building uh, home appliances these kind of device also require specific device forensics which is happening nowadays but i think we need to be little more careful little more proactive in developing better solutions in these areas we, we are going to see cyber physical and cyber biological systems that also is something which is which is interesting where can we extract evidences in a forensically sound manner from these devices can we extract evidences from wearables can we can we use rfid sensors and context aware computing to do some kind of predictive policing predictive forensic investigation so these are some of the questions which are there then we we can always leverage side channels you know side channel today is the best way to do forensics because conventional forensic solutions are not working anymore but devices are having sensors and they are leaking data and that leakage of data could be one source of evidences for the law enforcement agencies and that is what we are also developing you know i'm working on couple of problem statements uh, which are uh, probably uh, you know exploiting side channel attacks to extract evidences so in the last i would like to say that you know automation of investigation life cycle is something important because india as a country is seeing lot of pendency of cases so if we can have automation where you know starting from first time when the evidences are collected from the person before his device is given back to him to the data moving between forensic labs data moving between various kind of courts from district court to session court to high court if all this can be automated it can save lot of time it can save lot of energy and this is something uh, which can help in terms of reducing pendency of cases to develop creative search and seizure methods so that our workforce can be trained uh, we can also do a lot of device fingerprinting that you know every device has its own fingerprint in terms of it has sensors they are communicating they are sending out packets they are sending out radiations all this can be used to develop device specific fingerprints to detect the piece of device which is communicating and we can develop standards in that area and we can you know present to the world new standards which can then help efficient and effective forensic investigation so digital forensic readiness is the key we need to assess digital forensic readiness of everyone and we need to help organization be ready for incidents right now they are ready only for securing themselves but if something goes wrong they should be ready for digital forensic investigation also so digital forensic readiness is important in the uh, interest of time i will skip few things which are uh, not so important so i uh, you know commonly tell people that prevention is better than in cure uh, in digital world also so we need to be you know aware about what all criminals can do and take precautions in terms of development of solutions which are going to be used in digital forensics so that we can have better and effective solutions and we need to also create awareness at the grassroots level i think in that direction i am working on this book cyber unsafe which is doing well uh, it contains short stories uh, about you know how cyber crimes can be avoided with this uh, i would like to say thank you i will be happy to take questions and if any student or uh, anybody wants to collaborate in the area of digital forensic research i am open to that i can work uh, and provide internship opportunities and i can be probably mentor and advisor if somebody wants i'll post the link of my linkedin in chat and also of the book